and welcome back to Millia Cockapoo. Today I'm going to be talking about recall and my experience of teaching Millia. So in my personal opinion, recall is something that every dog should be good at and it's something that you should be practicing from the day that they come home and especially once they're out on walks if you want to take them off the lead. As more often I keep hearing stories of owners that don't have good recall for the dogs and then they're causing problems. So whether that's as extreme as the biting another dog or interfering in an owner trying to train the dog to have good recall. So recall is different for every dog owner. Some dogs are natural at it and others find it a bit more challenging to learn and want to go off and explore more on their own. I'm going to just be talking about my experience and giving you some of the tips that helped me. So the first thing you need to decide is what word you're going to use for recall. Are you going to use the name or are you going to use come? Are you going to use both or are you going to use here? You need to think of a word that you want to associate it with. I chose her name. So when I was teaching her name in the house, by saying Millie and then giving her a treat. Over time, I gradually got further away and started shouting her throughout the house. So she started to understand that when I shouted her name, I wanted her to come to me. And then I started practicing that in the garden, all before she could go out for a walk. So when she was able to go for a walk at 12 weeks old, I took her off the lead on that first day. I'm not gonna lie, I was petrified, but my dad was like, you've just got to do it. I'm sure she'll come back to you. I think he said it with such confidence that I was like, yes, yeah, she will. And before that, Millie had always been really good at coming to me in the house and she was like my little shadow. So on the few times we had been out, mainly to my mum and dad, she always came back to me and wanted to stick with me. Went to the beach and my dad was like, you've just got to do it, just bite the bullet. And I was like, no, I'm not doing it. And then he took a lead off. And he's always been a bit more risky with these things than me. And I think if it wasn't for him, I would have stuck with a training lead. We took off the lead and she just stuck with us. Yes, she ran up and down the beach, but she always came back when I shouted her name and then gave her a treat. I think having other people there also made me a bit more confident and doing it at the beach where one side was a cliff, the other side was the ocean. So I knew she could only go two ways and there was nobody else on the beach either. So it was a good place to go for the first time letting her off the lead because there was no other distractions. I wasn't worried. It was quite a um, stress-free environment to be in. Then we did that on every single walk afterwards. Whenever she possibly could, she would go off the lead. And I would always use her name and then give her a treat on when she came back to me. And also be really excited to be like, well done, yes, Millie. And then over time, it just built up. Um, I did buy a training lead. So a five meter training lead. But honestly, I've not really used it. Me and my mum put her on this and we called her name from one side of a field for about 15 minutes when she was about 13 weeks old. And that's the only time I've really used it for recall practices. Because honestly, she just gets tangled up in it and I find it more of an inconvenience than a help. But I can imagine that if your dog is one that wants to run off far, it would come in handy because then you could just let it drag behind them. So I think training leads um, are not for everybody and it depends on your dog, but it is good to have one just in case. The times when I found it useful have been either when we're doing building work in my garden and I don't want it to get in the way, but she wants to be outside so I can put her to this and then tie her to something so she can't get close enough to us. And also when we were away in the caravan, I would again tie her to a table or chair and then she'd got a bit more of a free rein other than just her short normal lead because they have to be on the lead and the caravan site. In general, I think I've been quite lucky with Millie's recall and I think it might be partly down to her personality of wanting to be near me most of the time. But I also think it's because I trusted her at such a young age that I instilled those good behaviours while she was so young that now she doesn't know any different. And don't get me wrong, she does have her moments. So I'm going to take you on our walk with us today and show you some of the things that I did to practice her recall and hopefully they might help some of you. I'm not a dog trainer. I picked up all of these things from watching other YouTube videos, reading books and doing my own research. So maybe some of these tricks will help you. But if you are really struggling, then I do advise contacting a dog trainer. So before we go on our walk, I'm just going to show you some of the things that I take with us and what Millie wears in case I get any questions. So the first thing that she wears on pretty much every walk during these winter months is her Pale Heather Equifleece. This is waterproof and it keeps Millie warm 
And honestly, the main reason why I put this on her every walk is so that she doesn't have to have a bath. Because with her being long haired, she gets covered in mud so quickly and with her being white as well. Whereas with wearing this, I just have to wash her feet when we get back. Along with the Equa Fleece, Millie also wears her collar and a harness. Some people will only choose to use one or the other. I like putting both on her. I like the harness because it gives me more to grab hold of. And also when she's going on and off the lead, it's easier to clip her on and off the harness than it is the collar. But I do find that she pulls more in the harness. So it's personal preference, but I do like having both. And then I also take her lead with us. It's just a standard lead and then a poo bag holder and yeah, the poo bags. And then the last thing you want to take with you is some treats. So you want something high value that your dog will love. Um, so either chicken, cheese, hot dog sausages or any other treats. Let's go for a walk. So we're on a walk now and my first bit of advice when practicing recall is to take them somewhere where you feel comfortable taking them off the lead. So as I previously mentioned, the first place I took Millie was to a beach. Another option is an enclosed field like what we're in today. So currently Millie is still on the lead, sniffing around. I'm going to take her off in a minute and do some recall practicing and show you what we did. But basically I try and walk in different directions and then shout her. And then if she doesn't come, I find that walking backwards makes me think, oh, she's leaving, and then she'll run after me. Yes, good girl. So I hope you got the gist of that in an enclosed field, but it's pretty much the same everywhere. You just want to be shouting the name or whatever the word is you've chosen and then giving them the treat and positive reinforcement when they come back to you. If they're not coming back to you, I find walking in a different direction or um, running backwards makes them think that you're leaving so then they'll come to you. Just attach the long lead on to Millie so you could see what you would do if you wasn't so confident about your dog. Um, I'm not holding it, it's just trailing behind her. Can you see it? Well done. Look where she goes with him. So the idea is that if they were to run off you could easily grab hold of it. And then over time you could cut bits off of it so you've got less to grab hold of. But I think it's personal preference. Depends what your local area is like. Um, I think if I were to be in a city and in a park and I wanted to practice it, then I would use the long lead more. But we're in the middle of the countryside where there's a lot of open fields and woodlands. I've not had to use it. But I just find it more of an inconvenience. This is the first time is ever actually dragged behind her and not being like wrapped around us. Oh no, and this is why we don't use it. Lily, you're hurting me like a sheep. We've now changed locations and we're in more of a open field. So once you've got your dog comfortable with an enclosed space, it's good then to take them to the next level and somewhere like an open field. 
from personal experience, I found that taking Millie to as many different places and practicing recall in them all has helped a lot. Millie! A general courtesy, I think it's important that if you see another dog and they're on the lead, that you call yours back and you put them on the lead because you don't know if that owner's trying to train them and um, they could be in season, anything could be going on with that dog. They might be aggressive to other dogs. You want to make sure that your dog can come back. You don't want to be that owner where you let your dog off lead and they go wild. Yes, it's good in times to let them off and let them play with other dogs, it's about letting her find that balance and making her understand as well that just because she sees a dog that doesn't mean that she always plays. If you have no control over your dog and they just run away and they play with every single one, they will think that every time that they're off the lead and they see a dog, they can go and play when they need to realise it's not that. They need to listen to you. Millie! Yes, good girl. So another tip for when you're out practicing your recall is also practice other training. So like sit, um, down, um, the name, wave, speaks one of Miller's favourite, spin. Go back to the basics that they do now and where they can get some rewards and then it starts making it fun again. Sit, speak, down. Sit, down. Sit, speak, yes. Really? Speak. So in summary, my main advice for all this video is practice. Don't do anything that you don't feel comfortable with or you don't feel like your dog's comfortable with. If you're in an area that you don't know and you don't know if your dog will come back, keep them on the lead. Don't feel obligated to take them off. Um, and if you do want to try taking them off, then try the long training leads and then build up to eventually being letting them wander around like this, where they're just stiff in the fields. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been of help to those of you who asked me to do this. Um, but yeah, practice makes perfect really. If your dog's not picking it up, don't get disheartened. Um, Millie definitely has other things that she's not as good at. She's here with me now, after the trees. So yeah, um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. Yeah, give it a thumbs up. Oh, you're on the trees. Um, Comment down below if there's any other videos you want us to film. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video from us and turn on those bell notifications so you get notified whenever we upload a new one, um, which at the moment is going to be half past nine every Sunday. So thank you for watching and we will see you next week. You're going to go on a walk in a minute. You're just sat on the bed at the moment looking at me like, you just said walk. No, no, just give me your treats, Morgan. Give me treats. I feel like you're not really seeing this. Just, just here. Yeah. You're meant to be running now. You need to run now. Mm, I'm trying to show you recall. Stay with me, they're gonna work. Speak. Yes. Millie. What are you doing? Millie, Millie.